Hello and welcome to the Superhero Hub. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And today we're reviewing Twin Peaks. Yeah, this is episode fourteen. Um, it was good at the start. I had really high hopes in the first five minutes. I was like, "Whoa!" I didn't see that coming. And then, I guess it was okay weirdness all the way through to the end. I thought it was a damn good episode. Uh, I like the reveal that it turns out that Diane's half a strange sister. I mean, yeah, I mean, the connection's a bit what can only be described as loose. But, I mean, boy. So, it is, but we, now we finally have a link. Because Cooper was always talking into his little dictaphone thing or whatever it was back in the 90s to Diane and now... Dougie, I guess, married her half sister, was it? Or sister, whatever, I guess. Half sister. I wonder if Dougie jo- oh, See, it's ha- I guess he must have looked exactly like. Is 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 weird in terms of that, in the sense that I guess he always looked like that, and I guess it, the only way it makes sense is if they are estranged. But now I guess it means they can pull their finger out. Because now they're in contact with Las Vegas, and then they're gonna get a hold of uh, the laughing idiots and be like, "Yo, Dougie Jones," and then they're gonna have to get out all the paperwork and stuff like that. So really, it kind of negated the fact that they were being goofy and threw it in the bin, because, yeah, nah, yeah, nah. Look, it, that was just yeah, look, screwed with people, I think. But with Dougie, from what I, I mean, I, I can't claim to have the answers, but only. You know, theories of other people have got as well. From what I can work out, Dougie was the stand-in, uh, a fail-safe for the fake Cooper in case he got caught. So that's why he looks like he's just another doppelganger, I guess, of Cooper, and now he's dead. So I guess that's the link. Yeah. Uh, so kind of move it, moving on from that, I mean... We kind of get to the the sheriffs. They're finally actually doing something, and they go to this place that they've been talking about how for however long, and then they find the weird like woman, and then I guess they all get teleported off. But well, I, one of them gets teleported. Well, it's weird because they all the other ones were like, "Oh, what happened?" and they were like, "Oh, I can't remember." True, I suppose, and we only see Andy go. I suppose you could argue that with what goes down with um, David. Oh, let's get what's David Lynch's name in the show? Gordon. Gordon. What goes down with, with Gordon and him saying he can't remember David Bowie? You could argue that something did happen and they don't remember it, but we see Andy go off and he sees the giant or what are they call him now, the fire, the fireman or something like that. Yeah, I don't get that. I don't get why they call him that. It's interesting as well because the English guy saw him as well, and he pointed him in the direction of this super glove. Yeah, so it's like, is he? Is the giant making like a, a an army or something, like a team to fight Bob? I don't know. It's all kind of bits and pieces because it's like, why introduce this kind of new character with the glove? Introduce him 15 episodes in. It seems uh, weird, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Um, As he explained, his like superhero origin story. But Andy's Andy was like a a big thing because he he gets he, a he sits there and basically sees like the big moments of Twin Peaks, like kind of like a recap. Yeah, and then he comes back and he's calm and he's confident while everyone else is freaking out. <laughs> where he always used to be the one that would cry, like he would literally cry in the old show. That was his role. So I guess it's his big hero moment. Well, what was weird for me is when he was carrying the girl, he was all kind of cool and he was carrying her and everything. And then when it got to got to him actually having to like move, like it was like. <laughs> like grimacing and then like stepped off camera and I was like oh steady on there because yeah so I guess yeah, yeah well he had his moment but it's, got, it's a comic it's like, if you got back there it should have passed her to like the, the, the one of the younger guys so yeah um, 
then you've got I guess Sarah Palmer's got a more prominent kind of uh, role. I mean, she's featured. <laughs> what? I, I didn't see that coming at all. Uh, well, I guess you were talking about her visions and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, no, that was kind of that. That I mean, that was cool. That, that's yeah, and that's interesting. Look, that raises a lot of questions. It's like, um, <laughs> are we going to get out of this? Probably not. But it's like, was she always like kind of possessed? Is this a new thing? Is she the girl that the thing climbed in the mouth of? Could be. That whole episode? Could be. And then it's interesting that like her daughter just happens to be, I hate to say it, but the saviour. <laughs> right, and her, and her husband was the vessel of Bob. Yeah. Uh, so t- two wrongs make a right. Maybe. I'd like throwing that one in. So yeah, um, I mean, yeah, the glove guy. I really don't get that. But I, again, as I said, the past couple of episodes, it felt like felt like they'd like rush towards it, like drop loads of stuff. And but I think the Diane revelation was real good. Um, I kind of thought, oh, see, they're starting to rush it now. But then I thought, actually, it's kind of. I like this kind of thing. Definitely like that revelation. Strong stuff. Um, and then yeah, you got the the bit at the end. And there was before we get to that, they were talking about blue rose a lot. And we saw the Bowie stuff. I'm I'm still on season two, so I haven't got to firewalk for me yet. But I I would have to guess that this was big firewalk for me stuff. Yeah, what was weird as well, like, I don't get why uh, the the police guy got arrested. I don't get what that... What, uh, He's a dirty cop. Oh, well... We don't uh, really know why, but we saw Lucy, like, he was eyeing up, he stole a letter or something. We, yeah. haven't, we haven't got enough information on why he is, but we know generally he's a douchebag. He was the one banging on about um, Sheriff Truman, Two's son, killing himself and laughing about it, obviously... He's a horrible person. What was weird was when he was locked up, you had that... The the you know, guy with, like, his face all crusty. Yeah, it's like... what I don't, is, is he a drunk, or is he, like, that, that kid that was in the car with the woman? I don't know. Um, like, is, is this meant to be all when pizza's got evil people in it, or is it just a weird thing? I, I have no idea. I would have thought they would have got him some sort of medical help, because that thing yeah. on his face don't look good. Um, so, yeah... I, re- I really like the kind of revelation thing and stuff like that. If one or two of them come kind of every episode on the way to the end, it'll kind of... It, it, it'll be cool. Uh, my thing now is I'm hoping they get this whole meeting up with Cooper done straight away, as opposed to him getting his stuff back. I mean, uh, how long is it going to take them to put two and two together and then get to Las Vegas? It's got to be two episodes at the most. As Finale. Ab- I don't know. I'm betting on it now. Cooper's not going to be Cooper until the end. Oh, I, I agree with that, if at all. But I don't think they should drag their heels now. I think they should go full power. Because, I mean, or maybe it works to their kind of betterment that they kind of have a bunch of nonsense and then all of a sudden they drop. Oh, by the way, uh, Janie just happens to be my half-sister. You know mm. what I mean? Maybe that works better for him because that's what I enjoyed the most. Uh, I, w- I wonder where James and the glove guy work. So I saw a security badge because I was thinking mm. maybe they were police and then you look on their arm and it says security. So At first I was thinking, because like, I don't think it is now, but at first I thought, are they working security at that place where that box was? But I'm not sure they are. But... James went off, I think, didn't he hear a noise or something? And I, I think, um, what's his face, it works at the the hotel, heard at Ben. I think he heard a similar noise, so I wonder if that's something. That uh, must be. Could be. Um... Yeah, it's interesting it, that whatever it is is in two separate spots, different parts yeah. of town and stuff like that. Uh, maybe there's more of them, but no one, no one's kind of noticed yet. At the end, in the, the roadhouse, yeah. is this just the thing now that 
people keep on telling this story, but we never see it, and that's the gag. I guess so, because there's a bunch of, like, different, like, m- most of it, like, before the music and stuff like that, it's just a load of, like, stuff happens and then you never see it again. Like the woman with the rash, the the bookie guy grips and the girls up and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like it's there and you never see it again, so... And it, nine times out of ten, in the first episode, in the I guess it was the end of the second episode, there were people that we knew. But after that, to my memory, it's all random people who we don't know in the new show or the old show yeah new and, characters right because even the girl i forget the name now but the girl mentioned the name of her mother and the way it was kind of presented it seems like it was this big revelation of a character we should know and i'm sat there thinking do i know that name and i don't th- correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think it is anyone we know i don't think it's anyone from the old show or from the new show and i'm like well what's this then i guess it's just, that's the thing we're never going to see any of this. It's like it's a small town and stuff's happening elsewhere. Maybe there'll be a whole episode in the Roadhouse where all these people get together and we know what the hell's going on with them. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's season the next season in mind or whatever. Uh, let's talk numbers. Eight. Uh, I'm going to go 8.5. I thought it's the best episode in a while. Oh, well, story-wise, I guess. Moving mm-hmm. things along, yeah. Uh, I'll give it an 8. There were some good things. There were a couple personal bits I thought were funny, i.e. the guy struggling with the woman, but whatever. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And we'll see you next week for more Superhero Hub. <laughs>